all right what's going on it's like mid-november now water temps like 62 63 the fish should be locked on to these docks behind me we're gonna do something kind of a little bit different today we're gonna actually do a q a but we're gonna do it live while i'm skipping docks fishing down the bank stuff like that i'm gonna be fishing it's gonna probably be like 30 45 minutes of straight just raw meat fishing if i bird nest if i bang a dock post whatever y'all are gonna see it and hopefully we catch a bass or two and at the same time miss hunter is gonna be asking me some of the questions from the comments on some of my latest videos so should be fun about to tie me up a jig to skip around these docks and maybe catch a couple spotted bass a couple large now so the untamed tackle jigs are actually have a quad keeper here that's a really really good keeper but i go ahead and still put just a drop of super glue on there just to make sure it's kind of like a little added extra little bonus for making sure it doesn't slide down this is the best hook keeper i've seen besides the screw lock one and i really don't like using the screw lock one so this is the best one i've seen but I still do throw me a little dab of super glue in there so this right here is the jig that we're going to be skipping around today three eighths ounce dirty crawl baby d bomb trailer Let's see if we we'll get us a bite or two tie this sucker on don't know how well y'all can see hopefully well a little san diego jam knot Good to go. Cut off all three tag ends. And that's it. <clears throat> all right. First things first. Typically, you only catch young bass off trampolines. Every once in a while, you'll catch a middle-aged one, but rarely do you catch a big old granny or anything like that off a trampoline. They just don't seem to get on them too well. Now, jet ski floats. Catch a big one off a dang jet ski float. See if we can't get us a bite right here. These are actually some of the shallowest docks on the lake that are really close to the main lake, which is right there on the other side of that island. So typically some fish on these kind of all the time. I just... I don't really soak it in there too much. I pretty much pitch up there beside a post, hop it a couple times. And then obviously, if I've caught a bunch of big ones there, I'll leave it on a little bit longer. But for the most part, it hits the bottom. I move it. And I get it out of there and make another cast. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. <clears throat> I do always pay attention to the position of the sun. The sun shining where the shades on one side, like the shades sticking off one side of the dock. I always try to cast more towards that side of the dock because it has the most shade at any given moment. And it changes throughout the day back and forth. Especially on the floating docks, I do that the most. On docks with poles, I just have a couple key places where I feel like big ones seem to get the most. Little boat ramp. Never caught one off this boat ramp, I don't believe. <clears throat> Still haven't. And I always, when I'm going down the bank, I'll just throw like a little shallow point like that. I'll just throw the little jig up to it and swim it back. Just looks like a little bluegill swimming away. You catch some, catch some keepers doing that every once in a while call some big is doing it too though in the fall or in the spring i really make sure i get as far back to the shallow side of a dock as i can it didn't take long two dots or something pretty nice little spot of bass for this lake it's hard to catch a spot of bass much bigger than that that one's like a pound and a quarter maybe like a probably like a pound and a quarter pound two pound three so just over a pound pretty difficult to catch one bigger than that out of this lake but there are some in here so i took two dots let's keep rolling thing about the fall is which is kind of different than the spring is you can catch one off the shallowest part of the dock and the deepest part of the dock at the exact same time in the spring 
typically they ought to be a little bit shallower early early pre-spawn they ought to be a little bit deeper but just kind of my thought process going down through here in the fall i have to go a little bit slower whereas in the spring i can seem to kind of figure out where they're sitting they're sitting up there super shallow and i could just skip behind it behind it behind it behind it and go really really quick got somebody doing some home renovations up there but they ain't gonna spoil our good time let's see lens check should be good should be good same thing make sure i get up there super shallow and that one landed a little bit short the pine needles off in the fall that's a big key is keep the pine needles off your bait because they will get on them and the bass don't like the pine needles <clears throat> Uh oh. Oop. That's too noisy, I apologize. Just what we gotta deal with. Let's grab a different bait real quick. All tangled up. Can we do that on this one, Hunter? Can we grab two different baits? No reason not to? All right. Mm. Hit the bottom. Thought I hit a bass, but I hit the bottom. How you doing? We got out here past the noise now, it'll be a little quieter for y'all. Okay, you gotta get closer. You gotta get here where they can hear the the questions. Also, about to dive into the Q and A section. All right. Oh, about to hit everybody with the jig. All right. Let's see. So Tony Pinkney says that he wished somebody would do a tutorial on pitch skipping. All right. Quick tutorial on pitch skipping. You just get the bait about just where the top of the bait is, right over the reel. And you just want to generate a lot of movement with your with your wrist and kind of like lean it sideways like this and then fling it out low to the water and then at the same time you want to release the bait and let it swing really close to the top of the water see how that one just barely ticked the top of the water you want to swing it just very close to the top of the water 
and then you just pitch it up in there. So it's really good whenever you don't have a lot of movement where you can go left or right or backhand. Just say you're like at a weird angle trying to skip like to that pole right there, which obviously I wouldn't be. But if my boat was turned like this, I'd be kind of at a weird angle and I would just try to do a little pitch skip up there beside it. So it's not one that I do too often because I do try to maintain pretty good boat position. But it is one that I do from time to time and it does help me get my bait in there a couple couple times a day or so but like right there if I was trying to go over them steps it's uh, just gonna be a lot easier to not swing it because there's a pole in the way I'll just be a lot easier to pitch skip it under there like that so that's kind of one of the applications where I use it whenever that pole's in the way the steps are in the way from here just a really small opening that's what I would do it and if I'm trying to go behind those steps I would also do it right there whoop bird nest at that time that happened from time to time from place to place and time to time. Not a bad one. There we go. Try this again. They're behind them steps. So that's whenever I would use it, whenever there's small openings or in bad boat positioning or stuff like that. That's, you know, textbook pit skipping. But I prefer to backhand it or roll it in there. Got any more? If y'all are wondering about the setup, this eight to one gear ratio reel, 20 pound Sunline shooter, and this is seven foot three heavy, extra fast point blank rod. So it's my skipping setup. Missed it, that was probably a tiny one. get at him from this way. He just skipped him up in there. We got us a poacher. Got us a poacher on the pond. Just kidding. Just kidding. Ready for your next oh man, that one was gone with it, dude. That's what we like to call taking it to see Miss Agnes right there. That one was moving with it. Probably a little spot of bass, but his gone. I'm ready, Hunter. I'm ready for the next question. Let's see what else somebody threw at us. I don't really know how you're going to explain this one, but I'll throw it at you. All right, we'll see. So, Kurt Becker. Oh, man. Nagged, yep. So this is one of those things where there's riprap that goes underneath that dock. So typically when you skip under there, you want to hold your line tight so it can't fall way down in there. But that time, it got us and I don't have another 3 8 ounce ace in the boat, I don't believe. So if I break this off, I got to go to half. But we'll see if we can't do the ultra limbo and get to it. Don't know if we will be able to though. Mm. Hey, we got it. I don't know. The rod's seven three, so we must have skipped it in there about ten feet. <laughs> so if it had been seven feet, it'd been a lot easier to get him out. That's what happens though. When you don't bring enough jigs in the boat, that's why you gotta keep four or five of each size. Oh man, another bird in this. So I do keep my reel pretty dang loose for uh, skipping. So if you make a mistake, you will bird nest it pretty quickly. Hope y'all are at the right angle. I'm gonna hate to do all of this talking and fish catching and filming and then have the camera pointed the wrong dang direction. So I don't really, when I'm skipping docks, I still don't ignore the overhangs and stuff like that. Even though there's no leaves on them and it's not touching the water, 
they still seem to position under them better than most other places on the same bank. It's a deep dock and that three eighths is falling slow. Slow. We've caught one, had two more bites. Felt like I should have caught that one on that boat ramp back there. But the other one I didn't really feel like I should have caught. Probably a small one. Go back under here and we'll, we'll just let him sink about four or five feet and swim him out. I'm ready for another question when you are, Miss Hunter. Oh, you don't think you'll be able to hear it good enough? Or see it good enough? No. Her Becker wants to know what a 17 degree angle is. Okay. <laughs> okay, so 17 degree angle is a little spotted bass. Oh, I lost that one because I was messing with him because Hunter was beside me, so I didn't swing him quick enough. Not blaming it on you. Just saying I would have typically swung him already. So a 17 degree angle is that's what you want. That's the angle that you want it to be going when the bait connects with the water. If you're going from like a 45 degree angle, which is like, you know, like that, the bait's going to hop too much. And if you're going at too low of an angle, you know, it just for whatever reason, it doesn't transfer the momentum as efficiently. So a 17 degree angle is just what is the optimum for transferring the energy and still getting some good skips out of it. So that's what we found that the, uh, I think it was competitive rock skippers which i don't know if y'all ever seen that it's pretty dang impressive actually how they can skip some of them dang rocks because when i pick one up I, I feel good to get it to go like six or seven times and they're slinging them suckers so that's what i saw that their best angle was was 17 degrees so that's where you want the jig to contact the water is at a 17 degree angle so just to clear that up 17 degree angle and i know that feels like a a bs number that i just pulled out of my you know what but that's really what we found on there. He also asked, is there any advantages or disadvantages to line diameter? Yep, so just in general, a smaller line diameter is going to come off the rod faster and it's going to be a little bit smoother, but it's going to bird nest a whole lot easier. So it's a, it's a happy medium between a thin enough diameter to generate a lot of speed and then you know not have a lot of break or not break too easily and not bird nest too easily so i go with 20 20 pound sunline has a diameter of 0 0.370 as far as millimeters go and that gives me a really good amount of velocity you know it gives me um a really like good fall rate when i'm throwing a 3 8 ounce jig or a half ounce jig because so your line if I'm throwing like a 5 8 ounce jig, I'm going to use, there's one, running with it. Man, if I'm using a, like a 5 8 ounce eviction jig, I'm almost always going to have 22 pound line on just because I'm going to be flipping it in heavier cover, a little bit deeper, stuff like that. And I'm using a bigger, heavier, bulkier jig. I'm going to go up, I'm going to upsize my line for that. So, oh man, see that right there was not 17 degrees. And this right here is rough. Just the worst one I've had in a while. Look at that one. <laughs> I just put this line on this morning too. See if we can get this one out. This is a rough one. I ain't had to cut one in a while. We might have to cut this one. Are you sure we can't edit this, Hunter? Nope. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This happens to everybody from time to time. It's gonna happen. All right, so we was about, I don't know, 10 minutes into skipping all these docks and I got like the worst bird nest I've had in a couple of years. So I don't know, that was a terrible one though. So I uh, had to pause the video, it's supposed to be uncut. I get it, but it took me like 10 minutes to get that sucker out. Dang man, they eating around these docks today. Took me like 10 minutes to get it out. Had to take my jacket off. Cause I got too dang hot cause I was annoyed and uh, now we back ready to go. 
line sounds terrible now. I burned it all up. Sounds all rough and kinked. Yep, we did get new cameras. So one thing, I know some of y'all that watch the channel a lot, probably noticed just how little we actually posted about the tournaments last year. We had a tremendous amount of camera issues. I'm talking about like awful. And it was like every single tournament, we had a camera go out, we lost all the footage, we had a hard drive go out, constant stuff like that. I think we, we ruined three cameras last year, not from rain or anything like that. They just wouldn't work. So went ahead and bought new ones. And that's what y'all are on today, a new one. So hopefully next year will be a little bit better and won't have all them issues. Is that fair to say, Hunter? We had a lot of issues with cameras this year. A lot. It'll... Oh yeah, Hunter filmed a ton of classic footage. That was actually on a hard drive. And then before she could even edit it, the hard drive malfunctioned. And it's gonna be like, three thousand dollars or something to get them off the hard drive how much is it fifteen hundred fifteen hundred to get it off the hard drive but we've got two hard drives that are down so that's fourteen hundred times two fifteen hundred times two so are you ready for your next question i'm ready so this is about electronics mm -hmm. and fishing this boat without any mm -hmm. Do you honestly do this for fun, or is this a, or do you do this for a way to better yourself for the tournament trail, like dialing your skills back in? I do it for fun, dude. I like it. I enjoy it. I love to fish. I literally love to fish. That's all I want to do, pretty much. So, I do like to spend a lot of my off season dialing in things that I feel like are my weakness. So I do that for sure. But I also just like to fish, man. I just like to fish. Especially when they're biting a little ace jig under docks. Then I really like to fish. Line sounds terrible now. Do you fish Murray and Hartwell? Never. I don't hardly ever fish Murray. I've been on Murray one time. And that was only to test ride a boat. And then uh, I fished Hartwell a few different tournaments and never got a check, ever. So, no, nope, don't fish them either very often at all. I haven't fished Hartwell in a few years, but I have been there a couple times. Just not good, not good for me. Are there any conditions where you would use fluoro for a few yeah, I use fluoro for a swim jig. I'm swimming it around docks, or like how I'm doing today, where I'm swimming it around these rocks and stuff, or even swimming it around wood sometimes. Yeah, I use fluoro for sure. But for the most part, if I'm rigging up a swim jig, it's gonna be on braid. Now, the only exception really is docks. Man, I can't believe I got that bad of a bird nest. That was a rough one. What else you got? When do you throw a clacking buzz bait over a fence? So I don't throw a clacking buzz bait hardly ever. The only time I do is whenever it's very, very cold and very muddy. I mean like water temp around 50 and stained. I'll throw a clacking buzz bait. But for the most part, not a fan. I don't like them very much at all. But I'll tell you what, about every co-angler I've ever had has a dang clacking buzz bait. Oh man, he let it go. And I can just hear him flailing that sucker out there right up there beside where I cast and Dun, 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 dun. Spooking everything in the pocket. Don't do them like that, Kyle. Well, I'm just saying, co anglers like a clacking buzz bait, big time, and I've never seen them catch one on it. Legitimately, I'm talking about half my co anglers have a clacking buzz bait. I've never seen them catch a bass on it, so I still don't throw it. Would not 
do you put on your jerk baits? Uh, San Diego jam. Or double pitson, whichever one you want to call it. San Diego jam, double pitson. I think the uh, more popular term is San Diego jam, but it might be actually called a double pitson. I'm not sure. How much backing line do you put on your reel? So basically, it just varies reel to reel. I put always use braid backing, and I um, pretty much just want enough where I can make maybe like a cast and a half of fluorocarbon. So I put enough to where I've got like a cast and a half of fluorocarbon. So. I gotta change trolling batteries. Skirt. That sucks, don't it? Yep. I even talked about that before we started filming. Because I knew I'd been using that battery for two days now. Uh oh, what'd I get? Oh, a seashell. Crushed him. Crushed him. Changing out my batteries. All right, so these these batteries are small. They're only 60 amp hours. I usually get a day and a half out of them, which fished all day yesterday, and then I guess you'd call it half of today. Because I've been out here before Miss Hunter came and got to filming, testing me out some stuff. The one. You have a very small compartment. Those sound like you need one. All right. Where's my jig rod? Let's see what we got. We got juice. Took a minute or two, but man, this this just went off the rails. It's supposed to be uncut motor battery died bird nested the heck out of my dang good rod missed four or five already lord have mercy well this right here is dang <laughs> this ain't normal bloopers i got a once every year and a half bird nest and a dad gum troll motor battery that don't die but every 18 hours die so that's crazy Oh, and I've missed like four. This is gonna be the dysfunctional raw, video. raw, uncut dysfunction in the tin rig with K Dub. Tin rigging. Look at that line. Gosh. Someone said, Do you ever throw the evergreen top on? I don't know what that is. Don't know it. So, probably not. <laughs> I know the company. I know the Evergreen Company, but uh, not familiar with their top water. There's a little pitch skip under there. You guys, another another question? No, this is just a funny comment. Somebody said, I'd like to see some offshore streaming, and somebody replied and commented and said, Go to another channel. Yep, offshore spooning. We ain't doing much offshore spooning. Don't do a lot of offshore spooning around here.
let's see old diving board bass usually 100 old diving boards you find one Control the motor on high we just rolling we just rolling there's one swimming it i done snatched him to me he came off because i snatched him to me and my line got tangled up around my dang guides so i couldn't <laughs> reel up and got slack in my line but he was about a nine incher maybe i got one pecking on right now what's wrong I know it don't usually even go like this. That was also Hunter was standing beside me, so I had to set the hook straight up. Which is no problem. You can stay there for show. This is terrible. This is awful. This is just terrible. This is not how you're supposed to fish when you're a professional. A little skip it under there. Skippity doo da, skippity day. We got dogs barking, burnt line, dead batteries, spots with a sore mouth, snakes jumping off a dang dock. God, dog, man. We got it all going on right here right now. Dang snake just slithered on off a dang dock. Man. We got it in the ghetto. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Hunter. We need a new director for this video. We hiring somebody can come handle all our stuff. <laughs> mm. Done had eighteen bites. Done touched one bass. That's crazy. Just wild. Eighteen bites, one bass. Got a better chance of going back over and catching that snake. One thing I do like to do, whenever there's more shade on a dock, like right now these docks are all the way in the shade, I'll just skip it right down the middle right there, because there's like all them wood posts, so that's the most cover. So I feel like if they're going to be on something that's not shade they're gonna get on all the wood it's just how i kind of approach it lord have mercy hunter i don't know something ain't going right today i ran out of youtube comments but i have some questions okay you ran out of youtube comments you only asked me four we get like 80 comments per video or 100 or something. I don't know. Not ask don't ask questions. They just say, go team Welcher. Those are my favorite. What, the questions? No, they go team Welcher. Yep. So, if you want to make Hunter happy, comment, go team Welcher. That's Hunter's favorite comment. Favorite comment you could ever comment. Go team Welcher. Capital W, lowercase, E-L-C-H-E. Capital R. I know how to no, I said capital W, capital R. You gotta do both the capitals. Okay. Question. Not what really. What is a fishing technique that never lets you down? Fishing technique that never lets me down. I tell you, I fish a lot of places. I think I've been let down by everything. So, like, if you don't have a limit and you're in the Molina Bay, what are you? It just depends. Like if we're on a Highland Reservoir or somewhere that's got like this right here, I'm gonna pick up this jig right here and I'm gonna go skip around docks and pitch it around everything, you know? And then there's some lakes where a worm is just like the best, you know, like if you're in Florida, it's just definitely a worm is what bails you out. So it just depends on kind of where you're at in the country, but it's definitely, for me, it's almost always gonna be something I can flip or skip and attack, you know, heavier cover than normal. Cause that's what I like to do. Hey, something that don't let you down is a, maybe a dog treat keep them from barking at you all the time because I get barked at more than anybody I know. God dog it, man. 
these are gotta be little bitty ones because i got a little bit trailer a little bitty little jig little ace jig it's gotta be little bitty spots eating this thing Let's see if we can attack from the side like that get over that cross beam man there it goes we'll just go right behind it all man we could have caught a dang limit the two best bites um i caught the biggest bite i'm pretty sure that i've had and the second one was the one that i lost right there at the boat because i didn't swing him in time sometimes you're just gonna lose them though rare rare with this jig then i lost that one i snatched out of the water because i snatched them out of the water and got slack in my line but that's okay let's try see if there's a dang fence fence panda without a doubt santee cooper Santee Cooper, late March. There's going to be some 30 pound bags caught. It could take 115 pounds to win that one. And I just know we're going to catch some big ones. Going to have some big bites in practice. Hopefully, some big bites in the tournament. It's just going to be a really, really fun event, especially for the way that I like to fish. Now, I'm not saying that I'm any type of a favorite in it, but I just know it's going to set up kind of the way I want it to set up. So, pretty dang excited about that. Come on, fish. A little backhanded on under there. There's one. Just keep it for a second this time. Oh, I lost, I missed my reel handle. <laughs> I missed my reel handle and I couldn't hardly get him good. Another spotted bass on the old dirty crawl ace. We got to retire, fellas and ladies, ladies and fellas. We gonna have to retire that one because that's rough. Let's see here. Are buying the ace. Well, if y'all are buying the ace, I do appreciate it. They do be biting it this time of year, big time. That's my favorite color, really, is a uh, dirty crawl for the fall, winter, spring. In the summer, I really, really like donk and around the spawn. But from fall to the pre-spawn, <laughs> from the fall to the pre-spawn, I'm talking about from October to about 1st of March, I like dirty crawl. And for the other times, I like either donk or green pumpkin and obviously if it's stained up i'm gonna like a black and blue so that's just where we at with it i'm trying to give a rundown of every season honey don't be a hater like that little backhander up in there so if any of y'all are wondering I am absolutely, I had just a tiny loop in my line from whenever I cast under that dock over there. And it just got worse and worse. So if any of y'all are wondering, I am a jig junkie. I love jigs. I tie my own skirts on some, changing trailers constantly, ordering trailers from every single brand, every type. Keep going back to the same couple though mini d-chunk and a baby d-bomb and a regular d-bomb and a regular chunk but you know those are the four or five i use the most now but i'm always trying new stuff always ordering new stuff but it just keeps going back to the same old stuff is good all the time man it just like there's not really that secret bait out there 
that I can tell that's going to just all of a sudden make you get a bunch of bites. So for me, simple is key. Throw right, throw the correct profile, the correct color, get you some bites, and reel them in. Seems to be the key. Words to live by out here with KW. Come on now. Hung on a dang piece of metal. That would have broke me off on this six pounder. So just so y'all know, a really, really big fish in this lake is a six pounder. So if you ever break one off and you don't see it, automatically a six pounder. If you say it's any bigger than that, it's unbelievable. You know, cause I mean, six pounders, they get caught every once or twice a month. So if you say I broke off a six pounder, it's believable. So as soon as you break one off instantly, six pounder. So this fish right here, if my line would've got wrapped around that float and he'd have broke off, that would have been a six pounder all day, every day. If you see one and he looks like a two, all right, that's a four. If you break him off and you see a two pounder, that's automatically a four. And if you break one off and he comes up jumping and he's a little 12 incher, that'd be a three. So you don't, if you break one off, he's automatically at least three. If you don't see him at all, he's automatically six. That's just what we kind of do out here on the circuit whenever we're fishing, when you tell your buddies. <laughs> I was at a weird angle, I had to get over and get to him. So we caught us a few. I do think the three biggest bites I've had I put in the boat. I have an idea. Let's let's hear it. Oh! In the video and start a non-dysfunctional one. So what are you gonna do with this one? Post it? Yeah, Okay, this is dysfunctional. So say bye. <laughs> if y'all like this video, I appreciate y'all watching. If y'all want to see more of this kind of raw, where I just go down the bank for a minute and ramble on and on and maybe Hunter asks a question or two and I set the hook a couple times. Leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, let me know you like it. The next one will be the same premise if y'all like this one. Just maybe with a few less bird nests, burnt line, snakes living in the water, lost fish, and dead batteries. So 30 minutes without all those things would be a more productive 30 minutes in my opinion. So leave me a like, leave me a comment, let me know if you liked it. We'll see y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed that one. That was cool.